Don't just be another foreigner, be a local Lao Wai. In case you missed our last four episodes on buying property here in China, check out this handy review. Number one, the one property rule. In places like Beijing or Shanghai, you're only allowed to purchase one residential property as a foreigner. Number two, the 70 year rule. When you buy property in China, you only have it for 70 years. Number three, paperwork. Definitely, definitely, definitely have the right paperwork. You'll need to prove that you've lived in the city in which you want to buy for at least a year. To do this, you'll need two documents. The first one is the residence permit that accompanies your Z or X visa that you will need to have held for at least a year prior to buying. You'll also need to get a special license from the Public Security Bureau. This license states that you can buy property here in China. Simply make an appointment with your local PSB to get this done. I'm no economist, but mm -hmm. with the government wanting to control inflation, doesn't that mean interest rates might rise a few times? Wow, Paul, that's absolutely correct. Remember, higher interest rates means higher mortgage repayments. So you're going to want to do your homework on local economy knowledge when you're deciding whether you want to buy. If you buy a property with your Chinese spouse, keep in mind that it's illegally theirs. So you want to think about your future relationship when you're deciding to buy a new home. Some cities are better suited for certain careers than others. Beijing, for example, is well known for bringing old and new China together and for its burgeoning media and creative industries. Shanghai, on the other hand, is a well-known financial hub. And lastly, affinity for Chinese culture. Would you rather live immersed in Chinese culture or with other expats? It's well known that cities like Beijing and Shanghai attract foreigners, but there are other popular cities that you should consider as well, such as Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and Chengdu. What about a more authentic China experience? Property prices in the smaller cities will be much cheaper. Got it. So big cities, big jobs, but big price tags. Small cities, easy living. You got it. So, you want to buy a property in the city you're living in. But before you take the plunge into the Chinese property market, you're going to need to know how to look for location. So how do you go about doing this? One of the most common ways is to register with a real estate agent. These agents will schedule viewings for you and even take you there themselves. Now some agents are even specialized in dealing with foreigners, although their fees might be slightly higher. These days, people are increasingly contacting the sellers directly, going through online property buying websites like 58.com, thus cutting out the need for a middleman. Okay, I've got um, so many questions. Um, Donnie, how do you say d double glazing? Um, I'll handle it from here, Paul. You're going to want to have plenty of questions ready to ask your realty agent. It's even a good idea to make a list before you go. Here are a few more tips for going to open houses. Number one, if you can, take a Chinese friend with you. If you have any specific questions about the building's foundation or copper wiring, they'll be better placed to ask for you. Number two, get the seller's contact details. Number three, take a few pictures. Pictures are a great way to see if the property looks like what it did when you decide to buy it. By going through an agent, you'll have an expert middleman in between you and your bank. They'll make the process very easy and convenient because they'll know exactly what to do. Now, with the second option, getting a loan directly through a bank, you have more options available to you. Your best bet is to finance through an international bank. Now, when you're making the decision to go through an agent or go to a bank directly, Keep in mind that agents that cater to foreigners will have relationships with one of those international banks as well. So what's next? Next, the bank will send someone over to your property to do an assessment of how much it's worth to determine how much money they want to give you for a loan. Awesome. However, there's no guarantee that the, what they want to give you will actually be what you pay for the price of the property. So what if they get it wrong? Well, for the most part, it'll be about what you need, but it's not a guarantee. 
However, this is an instance where having a realty agent there to help you out can make things a lot easier. They'll know how to get the money you need. Now, when the bank comes to do their assessment, keep in mind they're probably going to levy an assessment fee. However, there is a way around this as well. A lot of banks will be willing to waive the fee if you agree not to pay back your loan in full for a minimum set amount of time, for example, five years. By that time, my dance school will have made it big. I'll be swimming in the dough. I guess I'll opt to pay that extra assessment fee. That's it for this review on buying property in China. Remember to check out our website for full videos of each of these episodes. And if you have any specific questions, comments, or concerns, shoot me an email at localalwai at bon.tv. I'm Donnie Newman, and we'll see you next time on Local Lao Wai.